councillors, staff, members of the gallery, welcome <laughs> to all of you to for Tuesday, 18th of April. I like acknowledge the land we meet on today. It's the traditional lands for the Kaurna people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Kaurna people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Kaurna people today. We read the Council Pledge, we seek wisdom and understanding as we face the duties of our united task praying for the peace and prosperity of our city. Please be seated. <coughs> Item 1.3 is the declaration by members of a conflict of interest. Uh, it is a very long agenda tonight, and hopefully most of it fairly straightforward, but uh, are there any conflicts of interest that we should declare with any of those items? None spring to my mind, so I'll take that as a no. Uh, on leave we have new apologies uh, we have uh, Councillor Standen. Confirmation of minutes from Tuesday the 28th of March. Can someone move to accept those as a true record? So moved. Need to speak to it. A seconder. Have reverence to speak to it. In further debate, all those in favour against is carried unanimously. <laughs> That remind me, Jess, it's Joe's on here to remind me. The uh, Mayor's report is there for you on pages one and two. It is all still current, nothing got cancelled at the last minute, so it is as, as presented to you. Uh, any questions at all? No, if someone moved that the received and noted, the answer lead to speak to it, a seconder. Thank you, Mayor Mark Group, which is speak to it. Uh, further debate, all those in favour, against, it's carried unanimously. Uh, verbal reports from Council Representatives are there any verbal reports? No. Uh, petitions we have nil, deputations nil, motions of notice nil, questions with notice nil, questions without notice are there? Again? No. Protocol. Okay. And there's a lot there. Um, All right, let's run through the top. We'll uh, and we'll draw those that you wish to discuss in further detail. Otherwise, we'll move them on block. Does anybody wish to withdraw a 13.1 strategic planning and development policies committee meeting minutes from the third of April? No. The 14.1 leave of absence for Mayor Dago Lockton. I know that's right. We want to withdraw that. No. 14.2, I will withdraw to allow questions. The information report. 15.1, the project update for the Community Hub Live and Innovation Centre. On page 29, on this report, the update. 18.1, uh, the draft urban corridor zone interface areas policy review DPA for consultation. So the back end. Uh, 18.2, update on the implementation of the Planning Development Infrastructure Act. Next one, 18.3, participation in joint planning arrangements, pilots, projects, and we wish to withdraw that. That's at the back. 19.1, uh, local government association, ordinary general meeting, 21st, sorry, on this one, transition from development assessment panel to council assessment panel. Okay, withdraw that. Local Government Association Order of General Meeting 21st April voting preferences. Anybody wish to withdraw that? Look pretty straightforward to me. 19.2 Support Australian Local Government Association Restored Indexation to Financial Assistance Grants. Anybody wish to withdraw that? It's quite a compelling letter, I thought, from the President. 19.3 uh, <laughs> Why are you shooting that word? <laughs> I was convinced. <laughs> uh, 9.3, Local Government Association Rates Awareness Campaign. We just withdraw that. 19.4, National General Assembly of Local Government Call for Motions. Again, we've talked about that. Does anybody wish to withdraw it? 19.5, the 2016 Annual Internal Review, Section 270 Report. Does anybody wish to withdraw that? Long agenda. Sorry? 
<coughs> I just coughed and said long agenda. Came out with the cough. Getting <laughs> there. <laughs> 19.6, the Eastern Health Authority second budget review, 26 and 17, good news. I really wish to recall that. 97, storm damage report. Me. Okay, she's all by Councillor Harris. 19.8, Hampstead Road, Caroline Underground. We spoke about this last week, so we wish to report. Councillor Becker. 19.9, local nuisance and litter control act. 2016, operational. Does anybody wish to withdraw that? That's the difference. 1910, waste tender assessment interim report. Does anybody wish to withdraw that? No. 1911, North Adelaide Parklands funding proposals. Does anybody want to withdraw that? And there, Councillor Harris, I saw first. Uh, 1912, Alexander Street reconstruction project. Does anybody wish to withdraw that? Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, so, a bit of this something else to do. Okay. So, I'm seeking mover four. If you're thinking of moving, make sure you're happy with this. 13.1, 14 .1, 15, 18.2, 19.1, 19.2, 19.3, 19.4, 19.5, 19.6, and 19.10. So moved. So leave. No speaking to this motion, as is our custom. Uh, do I have a seconder? Get in there, my crew. That concludes debate. All those in favour? It's carried the answer. Cool. Right, so the first one that was withdrawn then was 14.2, the information report for the recommendation on page 9. Of Drawn it to uh, allow for questioning by elected members, should there be any. Um, are there 10? I'll see the back there. Standing? Yes. Um, I'm just referring to the attachment as per the strategic plan points. So, um, page number four. Uh, some sort of reference. 2.12. Item 2.12. Year on year, city recognised for high quality and interesting design and build form. Page 16 of the Page 16, agenda. Yeah. Um, yeah, so year on year increase in community satisfaction relating to building design. Um, I guess I'm just, you know, I'm through the chair, um, the status of the um, design awards and how we're measuring that. Yep. So, so there's two questions there. Yeah, yeah so one, one, one is, I guess, the criteria. <laughs> so we, I guess we would like to see the criteria maybe um, from the new planning act embedded in maybe our... Yes, Confused the bank okay. questions. So that, the first question is where are the urban design awards at? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, through the chair, we... Um, have engaged a young person to help us uh, with the Urban Design Awards. Today we we posted out about 300 uh, letters to developers and also to um, property owners who had made a development and, and were about to complete a development within the last two years. Uh, and we're looking at the Urban Design Awards um, being uh, held on, I think, about the 19th of July, Wednesday the 19th of July. <coughs> and uh, we've got a number of categories from uh, commercial through to residential and also um, environmental awards plus uh, an overall excellence award. So we've, uh, we will be able to... Um, Run through those urban design awards over the next um, over the next couple of months, and actually, we're I'm ta personally targeting uh, about twenty submissions. Okay, thank you. Next question was, uh, was I'm just formulating it. It was in regards to um, criteria, so we can articulate some criteria through our DPA, which I'll talk to you later. Um, <coughs> 
but there's probably things within the design awards that we can articulate a little bit better. So I'm really interested to know what criteria we're assessing this good design against. So this is for the awards? Yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you, through Chair. The um, criteria, we were keen to get the actual um, report or to get the actual invitations out and uh, we're in the process of de developing a council report which will have some of that criteria in it and in that report we're also asking for people to be on council rules. We're actually going to uh, request the mayor and the councillor to be on the judging panel and we've also got a member of the uh, Royal, the Institute of Architects and the Planning Institute plus uh, a director and uh, Chris Newby on on the panel. So we want to establish a panel but some of those things uh, are to be developed. Okay, thank you. Further questions on the side of the council? Sounds excellent. Let's move along. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Any further questions on the information report? Okay. the case. Happy for someone to move that we notice. Item 14.2, recommendation page 9. <laughs> no, we'll take Councillor Evans. Moving it, would you speak to it? Uh, just briefly. Um, say it's, uh, it's a good report, very informative. Great to see uh, alignment with our strategic plan as well. I think it's a useful tool in tracking how we are performing. Um, a noted omission was the uh, Rotary Club's Community Twilight Cinema event that was held, and that was um, a very successful event, 450-ish people attending that event with the support of council through the Community Support Funds um, Grants Program. So I'm very pleasing outcome there as well, and lots of other things, lots of other events and activities um, throughout the period as well, but um, it was really good to read in the report. Thank you. You have a second. Councillor Barnett, could you speak to it? Mm, I need to say that um, uh, this is, you know, one of the, um, what I term the very useful reports to us. Um, and um, so, you know, it gives a very good um, uh, overview and snapshot, you know, of things. And uh, again, the linking to our strategic plan, I think it's very helpful as well. So, yeah. Thank you. Any further debate? Just briefly, if I could just pick up on Councillor Evans' opening statement, which is it just begs the question: How how do we incorporate community activities that we are part funding into this report? Because in a way, it is helping achieve our strategic objectives. I know we have a kind of a quill process later on, but is there any reason why we couldn't? Where we, we've had a role, we couldn't incorporate it. Uh, thanks to the chair and through you. Um, there's probably no reason why we can't, other than not knowing until an acquittal, because we don't participate necessarily in all of the, of the events. And it's great to hear it was a success. I was only thinking about that event this morning. Um, so, yeah, no reason why we we won't. It's just a matter of knowing. Um, as, as you said, we, we do provide the support, so it's fair to provide yeah. feedback. Okay. Good to go. Further debate. That concludes debate. I see. Move wants to sum up. No. Please debate all those in favour. Against, carried unanimously. Uh, the next item was drawn. 18.1 on page the draft urban corridor zone interface series policy review DPA consultation. Page 35. Uh, Councillor Bank, just a brief reason why I drew it and if you want to move. Oh, look, I, I just wanted to draw um, the member body's attention to the changes, the proposed changes. I think there's some really good things in this because it's answering um, a lot of the issues that we've had, but I also want to um, just make clear what we're putting out to the community. Okay, um, so, so that, are you now moving it? Because that would lead to say all that stuff. Well... Very <laughs> um, no, I don't think I will because I might propose an amendment. Okay, if we wish to move it as it is. Between costs, sorry. Yes. Thank you, James. Yes, um, and uh, thank you to the um, other um, members of the uh, committee that were present with this. Um, it uh, was gone into, um, we had quite a lot of questions and and, uh, <laughs> and um, so uh, I think we've tried as best we can um, within the uh, constrictors of um, uh, you know, what we're allowed to 
sort of do basically. Mm. <laughs> um, yes, but I think we're and I think also we're trying to pick up on um, a lot of the points that have been made from uh, community, uh, various um, community groups um, and also from our um, uh, uh, DAP, uh, uh, some of our um, uh, expert people uh, on the DAP as well. Um, so um, I think I'll just leave it uh, for that and we'll see what comes out of any other questions or if the uh, comments from the other elected members at the moment. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Lee, I to recognise your membership of that committee. Yeah, um, to say it was um, fantastic work by the staff. It was a, a very detailed, extensive um, presentation put forward to the members of the committee. Um, we had a long discussion around what was uh, what we thought it should be, and that is the uh, version before us. Uh, I think it's important that we put it out to our community. We can make, they can make changes, we can make changes. I think it's important that we get it out there as quickly as possible and get feedback from them. So I hope that uh, the mission is important. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Councillor Tobacco. Thank you, Councillor Tobacco. Um, I Based on the fact that it's going out for community consultation, um, I'm not going to propose an amendment, but I do want to draw your attention to, if you look at page 111. 111. Sorry, it's, I think it's uh, 115. That's in the... Or it doesn't have a no. number on it. They, uh, the Davis and Davis report summary where it says current proposed example. <coughs> Is that the design testing, attachment um, 65 to 70, Davis and Davis? Yes, yeah, so it's attachment 65 to 70, but it doesn't actually give us a number on the thing. <laughs> I uh, six, page 69. So if you're using it on your iPad, it's 111. Start of it. And look, I, while, while everyone's trying to find their feet, where the pictures are, and certainly for the West Ward Council on this map, um, <laughs> um, just we need pictures. No, and I'm right. looking at his phone. These pictures, that's the pages. Yeah, so there's a series of pictures, and I think yeah, this has yeah. been a really um, fantastic thing that we did in engaging Davis and Davis because um, quite often the disconnect between the written word and what counts, uh, what is presented to the community. Um, is what we expect, but we're giving words, not pictures. So I think this is a really interesting diagram. So if you scroll through, there is a picture of current proposed an example. And look, um, this is sort of something I guess the committee sort of agonised over a little bit, well, I did personally. Um, there's still shadow diagrams to come. And I guess the thing you want to be cognisant of is the fact that we've got density already in parts of um, Churchill Road. So we've already got some townhouses and we've already got some unit complexes and I still think that the development assessment panel can look at a four-storey boundary wall versus a two-storey boundary wall on merit. But by open slather just going four-storey wall and putting that out to our community, I think that is the wrong signal to be sending personally. Um, I, I've, look, I would struggle to support it, I think, um, going out to the community, because I just think that if we consolidated it in one area and said, okay, well, this part of the urban corridor, we're doing the footprint prints and this is what's being built and it's consolidated, but this is everywhere along the urban corridor you can do this. Um, and what that means is someone built a two-storey townhouse two years ago and their designated outdoor spaces to the north, they could have a four-storey wall right next to them. And I, I just think going out to the community with that message is wrong. And I guess 
they've trusted us in the initial development plan that we did. Okay. And, and yes, there are improvements. So it's certainly um, deep, um, deep planting areas, which I think is really important, which means you can get a sort of tree planted, for example, um, and certainly a lot more focus on durable materials. Um, but I certainly wasn't presented with any um, sort of shadow diagrams to show how existing properties would be impacted and I'd like to see what the community um, say about it. But I, I would be hesitant to be supporting this motion and putting that out to our community. Okay. Any further debate from the side? Not, not necessarily a debate because I haven't unfortunately read enough, but I, I'm personally concerned about the walls alongside others, the four, four metre one and things like that. So I'd need to read more about it, but I just didn't want to smooth it through. I personally am concerned about it. Go to the back. Just a question, more or less, and you know, we've got all of the reports in front of us, but it is quite technical, quite detailed. Um, I'm wondering if the director maybe could just give us a, a brief summary of what's happened um, in as plain English as you can. Um, I, I do note that we have had a couple of workshop discussions on this, particularly around waste management and looking at ways to effectively mitigate waste solutions. And this, by and large, has never been improved in non-existent policy. But I guess I'm just going to some clarity around how that um, discussion has gone in plain English. Director, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot in that. Perhaps if you could turn your mind to perhaps the top three things that's been to direct you too much, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, and, 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 work here. You're asking me to for some, some yeah. couple of minutes. Um, <clears throat> look, thanks for the question. And this is a difficult one through the chair. Um, I might have to just refer to some notes through the report, um, there's probably about eight or nine key issues that have been identified um, through feedback from the community and, and what our DOP were seeing. Um, visual, visual privacy was a key one, um, both um, from balconies looking down as well as from public realm looking up. So there's some, there's some policy around how to deal with those sort of first floor or second floor balconies and whether they should be a combination of materials or some um, some more solid screening. <coughs> probably different to the one example on the corner of Allen Street, which we can probably all be familiar with. So that was one of the key issues. Landscaping came up from pretty much everybody, and I think that's by the very nature of you're losing the one house on an 800 square metre block, which is inherently surrounded by at least some grass and a few trees, you're losing that to be replaced with a, a building that's covering around about 90% of the site. Um, and also landscaping takes some time to develop. So um, the, the policy around that is looking to get the um, an ability to plant larger trees um, and particularly in front and at the rear of these three to four storey buildings, so the deep root planting zones and things like that are looking to be created. Rather than, we've got a few examples where you're getting small strips of landscaping and then a dozen water metres get in, in, in that location. So looking to avoid that. Um, one thing I guess that's, that's quite important, overall height is not being touched. We're not looking to go up, we're not looking to go down. The, the heights and densities are working. Um, both from the state's perspective and from our perspective, from a planning point of view. Um, I fear I'm missing another key one or two. Car parking, always a big issue, and there's this, I guess, potential view that we never have enough. Um, that's not what we're seeing, um, so we're not looking to, to establish a lot of change around that. Um, but the entrances to the street um, something that we're trying to look at um, an enhancement of, rather than what we're getting at the moment is sort of the hydrant booster you garage entrance and a small lobby, looking to put better landscaping, bigger lobbies, um, get that balance a bit right. And there's also been, I guess, an issue with the current policy that disincentivises site amalgamation. 
So the wider the site, so if you were to go and buy two or three sites along Churchill Road, the wider that site was, the current policy requires you to be further in off those site boundaries, um, which means you'll lose the density that you're looking for and potentially create a building which, um, from a design point of view, could look unfinished to, to some. So we're looking to um, not necessarily over incentivise the amalgamation, but certainly take away the disincentive. Um, so if, you're, if your site is 15 metres wide, you can have an X setback, and if your site's 30 metres wide, the setback will be the same. So that's it. But building into Councillor Edward's question that and with this mount might have been talkers about what Councillor the Backer raised, which is the change on the boundary wall of minus <coughs> one, two metres to four metres, and, and why? Certainly. Look, um, one of the issues through the Chair that we've um, I guess been observing or, or been fearing to some degree is a number of four-storey apartment buildings next to each other, of which we haven't really seen yet. We're seeing one and then existing build form and then another. Um, but to extrapolate the policy out, you can get one four-storey building here immediately next to another. Under the current policy, once you're above the second floor, you have your small setback. Um, two or three metres or thereabouts. Um, so if both developments then have that, you've got balconies that aren't particularly far apart, right down the length of the property. Um, what the, the plan change is looking to do is establish a more consistent streetscape um, in that the buildings can be developed boundary to boundary, recognising it's a zone in transition and that will take time and we will have years, potentially decades, of a solid wall on a boundary next to something that isn't the same. Um, but the intent is to create that more consistent streetscape. And I remember back to um, David Cook, our DAP chair, showed some images of San Francisco and other streets where, where the streetscape, it appears finished. You've got your three and four storey buildings, but they're all relatively consistent across the front. And you don't have this, I guess, these little view corridors, these little gaps um, as presented from the street. Um, what it also does, and David, you articulated this much better than I the other day, um, <coughs> it reorientates the front apartments to then overlook the public space and overlook Churchill Road, overlook Prospect Road, rather than all having these sort of north-south orientations looking at each other. Um, so that presents, I guess, you know, some benefits of sort of passive surveillance over the street and potentially a more um, enticing or inviting view than peering at your neighbour um, who's got a similar type. Thank you, Director. Is there a further question to that? No, that's, no, that, that sums it up. I'd like to thank the Director for entertaining the question. I read the report cover to cover, but now some of that stuff makes sense to you now, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I, 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 can speak, I, I can speak if I want it now. It's, it's a long time. It's a hard report to read because it has to be what, what it is. Yeah. Um, any further debate? After asking the question, I oh, right. <laughs> feel like I should. Um, yeah, look, I did. I read the report twice, and it, you know, while you sort of read the words on the page and sort of putting in context, it is somewhat hard to digest. <laughs> um, but to me, this is about policy improvement. So um, you know, we understand we, we pioneered um, a, a change in the DAP several years ago. Um, naturally, there are things that work. There are things that haven't. Um, it's healthy to review these policies. Have we got the right um, formula? Here, don't know. This is an improvement. It sounds like it is. It sounds like there's some really good stuff. So if we if we don't do this, if we don't continue to look to reshape and to improve, well, we we continue to go down the path of what we've currently got. So it's something I think we should always question. It's something I think we should always try and mould and, and shape based on experience. And it seems like by and large we've done that. So on that basis, I'm happy to support it to go to the community. Thank you. If you good. Thank you very much. Um, just one brief question, which. Um, uh, I think it's fairly straightforward. It's the issue of interim effect, um, and I'm just interested in what conversations we've had with the department around trying to ensure that there is some interim effect when this goes out for consultation. Um, there is always the possibility that there's some perverse behaviour that happens when these sort of things get out of the public realm, and um, I'm concerned about it's not having interim effect. So, can you just give us a bit of an update on this? Thanks, Chris. Certainly. Thank you. And through the chair, um, We've sent a couple of letters to the Minister's office seeking interim effect um, as directed by the Chamber. The first one we got what I would consider a relatively template response of we don't normally use interim effect um, for a DPA that isn't heritage. Um, 
or something along those lines. We then wrote again and got a very different answer, which was, I'm not opposed to it, but I need to see the DPA first before I consider it. So, um, and we've had a couple of discussions with um, some senior officers in GIPT who certainly now, more so than at the SOI stage, really understand why there may be a need and how many developments may continue to, to get through under the same rules. So I think from my perspective there's a better chance than not of getting interim effect um, and the recommendation tonight is to reinforce that request um, just so that it is very clear to the Minister that we see there's a need um, to move to this now um, and then go through that, that process of, of, of tweaking and refining um, once these more significant shifts are made. Okay. Um, no, look, thank you very much. That answers um, my question. Just to probably reinforce, I think, Councillor Lee's point to thank staff and <coughs> some homes. Um, I think it's really necessary. I've had a couple of conversations only in the last week with people around design. It's really good that we've got something down in the public domain we can um, share to other people to, to look at and to consider. Um, also, there is support in motion tonight. Thank you. Further debate? Um, perhaps just briefly from the Chair, there is a lot in here that's fairly straightforward, I think, that none of us would have any argument with the landscaping, the prominence of front doors, the improvements of the aesthetics, the requirement of boundary walls to have something on them, not just you know, concrete dust. Um, I think we'd all be pretty much happy with those. I think our community would too. So, <coughs> um, I think the issue that Council the Backer raises is probably the controversial issue. Uh, and I'm sure it will attract a great deal of attention. Um, and I think for good reasons. Uh, uh, the dilemma we have, and the dilemma the community has, is if we keep the same policy settings we have now, um, I, I think the director described it well, we will have apartments all facing north-south, all looking into the next apartment group. So they'll have five or six in a row, five or six in a row, so these things are three or four levels you do the math. Um, if we adopt what's in the Davis and Davis example, which is what's embedded in the changes that we requested, um, we, will, we will be encouraging through policy the front three apartments to face Churchill Road instead of facing each other. So by facing Churchill Road, they'll be looking in the public domain and their back windows will be looking into the backyard of its own building. So that's likely to be the second bedroom. First bedroom, living room, facing church room. So half the building will be oriented a different way, and I think a better way, which is pretty much how houses are oriented in our streets, they face the street. Um, so whilst that sounds like a good thing, it only really works if you have a consistent floor plate from top to bottom. And our original design for the development plan had you uh, allowed to have boundary walls up to two levels, and you had to come in um, two or three metres, I can't which one was, but to go the next two levels. So what inevitably happens was the developers, developers will say, oh, I need my car park at ground level, but above that I'm going to have the same floor plate all the way up. If I can only have it two metres in at the top, then all three levels will be two metres in. So they didn't really take advantage of the boundary wall up to two levels. So if we're going to change policy, we've got to change it to something like this. I think it's a better outcome in terms of outlook. I think it's better from the street once there are two or three of these things together, it will make sense. However, in between two or three being together, we're likely to be looking at large walls that are 15 metres high and um, 15 metres long, 18 metres from the front boundary, take three metres off the landscape, and it'll be 15 by 15. Now, that'll be confronting to some people. So the other aspects of the plan say they have to be decorated or somehow made to look like something other than in the concrete. So these things have to work together, give them some shape and form and colour. Um, I think it'll be a great conversation to have with the community because I think we can go either way. We can stick with what we've got. I think it's really easy to show people what we've got because you can drive down and say, this is what it's like when they all face each other. And they're all set back from the boundary. The drawings here show what it would be like if we change this policy. So we're opposing the change. Now, if the community is uncomfortable, we can always say, we'll go back to what we've got. But I, I think it's better to pose something that's, that stimulates discussion than propose what we've already got and ask the community would they want to consider something else. So we do it either way, but I think we're doing it the right way in this proposal. 
So I just encourage you to understand that it will be controversial for some people. Understand that, uh, Michael, sorry, um, not understand, um, um, having heard my description that I think it's a better outcome for occupants and for privacy of neighbours uh, either side. I think it's a better outcome, but understand the challenges associated with those large walls. And does the rest of the document help us make sure that they will be walls that are worth looking at for however long we need to look at them? The only example I can think to guide your thinking is the uh, listing of apartments up here in the corner of Barker Street, uh, Barker Road, sorry, where uh, the side boundary has no windows in it, but it's all set back at funny amounts and all paint, cream or whatever the colour is. And I think it looks a bit odd. I kind of wonder if this policy would have been a bit more honest to say, yeah, if you build a boundary, but it's got to be a decent looking wall, it can't be cream paint, um, but we don't end up with these funny little things, because you can imagine when the building gets built next to it, there'll be all these nooks and crannies, which will make no sense to anybody. I expected time, but those owners might come back to us and ask us to fill it in somehow. I don't know, but it just, to me, it looks like an unresolved bit of plant planning policy. I think we can do better. So that's enough from me. I, I think it's worth going out and have a conversation. I'm assured by the team that there'll be lots of graphics, lots of pictures, photographs, samples to, um, to have those discussions. So it'll be really, hopefully really well into the discussion. I absolutely concur with that. I do my best to lobby for that on the behalf if it gets up to time. Thank you. Any further debate at all? And that's the move of Councillor Barnett, just to sum up. Uh, just briefly, um, I think. Um, uh, most of the um, items that you see in red are, are the, uh, the changes and um, it's particularly difficult because um, we're coming now after some of the horses have bolted, so to speak, <laughs> and so this is um, a reaction uh, uh, to, uh, to what's been happening. Um, and I guess only time will tell whether, um, you know, some of uh, the developers coming along will, you know, uh, sort of take on board what we want. And I think that we would definitely like a, a development assessment panel, you know, the, our rules, our guidelines, our um, uh, all, all these sorts of things will, uh, and if developers speak to our council, uh, council staff that they know quite firmly that this is where we want it to happen, all right? And um, this is what um, our development assessment panel will be looking for. Um, and some of those things that's um, most probably a bit more difficult to achieve will be uh, perhaps the amalgamation of the sites. But we've given the um, the um, the header uh, to say, you know, this um, is what we would like um, perhaps to see and to try and avoid, you know, some of this just the, the sawtooth effect uh, that we're seeing now. Because part of our dilemma has been they're all building on single blocks. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, uh, and the other thing um, I think is about the um, new things that consider the local to topography uh, that slopes from east to west. Uh, particularly we've done in our lower Prospect Road uh, site, some of the buildings there, all right, to take into account some of that. Um, so, yeah, apart from, you know, trying to get um, an improvement on the parking spaces, uh, you know, the discussion about do we still need to have parking spaces for the future? <laughs> but um, this is a plan that uh, usually typically only goes for well, several years, but uh, who knows, you know, we might later, with technology overtaking us, um, you know, be led down to review it yet again. Uh, anyway, so it was quite a wide-ranging discussion, and this is the outcome that um, we'd like you uh, to support, reminding it's going to community consultation, um, and so it'd be very interesting to see what comes out of that. So I commend it uh, to you to support. Thank you. That concludes the debate. All those in favour? <coughs> yes. Ms. Carrick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, the next item we've drawn was item 18.3, Participation in Joint Planning Arrangements Pilot Project. Councillor Back, what's the brief reason why it's short? Oh, look, it was just a question, really. Um, look, I'm 
generally supportive of this, even though I know there's still some detail to come. Um, just a question regards, are we the only, I mean, it's coming from ERA, but are we the only council that's participated? No, no, the report does state that every council is oh, okay. pretty much this template report okay. at this meeting cycle. <coughs> So, would you wish to move it, having withdrawn? Yeah. Okay, would you speak any further to it? Do I have a second that? Mr. Harris, would you speak to it? No, thank you. Further debate? All those in favour? Yes, carried unanimously. Thank you. The next one was item 18.4 Transition from Development Assessment Panel to Council Assessment Panel on page 162, link section 3. So the back just brief, brief again. Again, I just wanted some clarification about the role of elected members in the new body and the transition period. Uh, so that so something not clear. Um, details most of that. So your specific question? Yeah, it was just in regards to. It seemed to be that it was only five members, but there is a role for two elected members, but you can stay on for an extra six months. Okay, so just transitioning just from a seven yes. to a five. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, <coughs> through the Chair, this report won't change the elected member makeup of the panel until the Minister declares the date um, to start a council assessment panel instead of a development assessment panel, at which time we'll bring another report back um, to essentially drop one council member from the, the panel in total. So this report is looking to establish the independence side of it and we can continue to operate um, even six months after that date is declared, but within the month or so after that, we'll bring a report back um, saying that, um, that that previous system no longer exists and we need um, one elected member to, to be there ongoing at that point. So presumably that will be by way of ballot or whatever. We'll just choose a new elected member that might look like one of the old, sorry, currently serving elected members. Through the chair, the intent would likely be, as it has in the past, where we've had vacancies and put a report up saying here's a panel and here's, a, here's a, a, an opportunity and a ballot. Okay. Any further questions? Wish to move this current form? Um, yes, have you three? Speak to any further? I've seconded it. That's a lead who should speak to it. Mm -hmm. Further debate? No. That concludes the debate. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item of form was item 19.7, storm damage report, page 239. And Councillor Harris, just a brief reason why it's referred. A couple of questions first, and then I am willing to move it after. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Uh, yep, go for your couple of questions, Councillor. Um, two, there's an attachment on page 243, which is a, a map, I suppose, is how you put it, and it's got red and green dots, and which say tree removal, limb failure, why that hasn't got all the trees in it that happened is, I just wondered why there's trees missing, well, not missing because they're not there anymore, but why they're not on the, the dot system here. Yeah, okay, so perhaps director, if you can guide us as to where, where have the dots come from? What's the database that... For someone's uh, memory or yeah through the mayor that'll be uh, what was reported through the CRM system and the assessment um, as they were reported to the team um, so when the arborist went out and assessed the trees and when staff went out and assessed what the loss was and also what the uh, tree the branch value was so so they should all be here it should all be there yeah, look uh, by all means uh, through the mayor if um, there's some that you reckon aren't represented on that that map um, for those to me and I'll investigate. Okay. Thank you. Follow-up question, Council? Um, well, I'm just absorbing that one. Um, so they're the ones that will be replaced. So my other question is, um, somewhere I 
just finished reading, sorry, here, 15, uh, 5.6, which is on page 241, that says all storm damaged trees that were removed, I suppose removed by us, also removed by Mother Earth, have been added to council's trees planting and that. Um, you see that? 5.16. I should say it to you, sorry. Uh, 5.16. So my question on that one is, um, what about, and I've got the pictures here and I've actually sent them to the director before, what about ones that have been left looking like a stick point north or um, particularly, I can say, corner of 2nd Avenue, Burwood Avenue is three, Emily Street is about three, and all around various other. So there's still a tree stump there, but, you know, particularly 2nd Avenue, it's only one stick that's poking out. I'm talking about big cedar tree. It's just poke, that has never, if it just got left there, I imagine it would continue to grow but it will never grow as a street tree because it's only got one branch. And Burwood Avenue, right on the corner, I know it's in other councillors' area, but there's a couple. That, so my concern is what about the trees that are sort of damaged beyond repair, I suppose, still in the ground but damaged beyond repair? Would they Do they count in this one? Yeah, so so through, through the Mayor, um, if... Um they're in a condition where they can't be salvaged, um, they'll be dealt with through the cedar, white cedar replacement program. So what that means is that if they don't pose an immediate risk, uh, what the team will do is go out and remove them and then replace them accordingly, part of the white cedar replacement program. So that program consists of removal and, and replacement. Um, and so a, a, an officer would have assessed the tree, although aesthetically it's not pleasing to the eye or doesn't uh, function as we desire as a tree with a proper canopy or a proper head. Um, what, we'll, what we'll do is um, get that removed through the, that program, through the white cedar replacement program. Um, but by all means, um, as stressed here, look, uh, I've, I've taken on board some of your photos, but if you do identify all of, any of those trees that um, you're, you're sitting suspicious about what's going to happen to them, forward it to my team, forward it to me, and I'll investigate it accordingly. Thank you. Okay, last question, then I'll move it. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Last question is, the tree particularly on the corner of California and Ralph Street, the one that I said split right up the middle, that I'm actually concerned if we do have another storm, will injure people or property. And they were going to remove it when you sent me the message a month or so ago, but it's still exactly there. That's the one on the corner in California, but basically on the corner of Ralph Street. It's not on the plan. No. And most of the ones I sent CMR in, so, or whatever that word is, CRMs, CRMs in, there's the ones, there's a whole lot not on, on there. That's my concern. But I can, I'll resend it if that system ever gets up and running. Um, in the main, I'd like to move it. Sorry, yeah, that's... Very often. You can't sort of answer those ones until it happens. So I'd like to move it, and and particularly because I was opposed to the other one, the previous one that we had in January, and I was only opposed to it that, in my view, it wasn't complete, whereas I see this far more complete at the cost of what happens a plan of replacing some of them and things like that and then now hopefully we'll turn a way of checking them all that. So while not reading it fully because I wasn't here over the weekend, I, I'm happy with this report as it is because it went into that detail. But I'm still very concerned in the end that some of these the trees, if you look at Emily Street, Lost Three, and then no dots for Emily Street, Second Avenue, others. But I'm moving it and happily. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have a second? Mayor Tuckbrook, do you just to say it's a terrific report. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, do we have any others? Any further debate, I should stress. You sick, are you? I'm not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you an out. <laughs> um, I think, um, sorry, just briefly from the Chair, I think what the issues that Councillor Harris raised and the Director is, uh, is unable to completely um, satisfy in terms of missing bits is exactly what we need to look at the CRM system. So that it gets so it gets logged, and, uh, and I think that would help. So our control and use of data looks good here. You know, I think this is a really vast improvement. I agree with Councillor Harris. It's a really good report about what happened and what we had to do, and helps us understand if we get hit by a storm what that will cost the community. I think we can have a much better idea. Um, the tree planning program we spoke about it. Budget discussions. It's great to see there's a plan here. Uh, so I, I think. Um, yeah, some, some of the data capture needs to be made, needs to be improved. And I think that's going to be up to us at some stage. I'm sure the staff are going to come to us with a request to spend some money on a, on a customer uh, a complaint mechanism that plugs straight into the rest of the system so that these reports are really easy to generate because I can't imagine this was easy to generate. This would take some time, I presume. Yeah. So uh, that all takes a lot of time by our staff. They're much nicer to hit a button. Um, thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Harris, for the drawing. So, about uh, any further debate? Councillor Harris, do you see the need to sum up? No, thank you. The debate all those in favour? Against is carried unanimously. The next item was drawn. The drawn was the item 19 by 8, Hampstead Road Power Lines Underground, on page 245. Councillor Baggins, please wave through it. One comment, one question. Um, I just think it's a really great initiative and it's good to see some money being spent east there. Um, the other question was regards to 5.13 on page 247. There will be the opportunity to consider streetscape upgrade works along Hampstead Road. I'm just wondering what time frame on that. Given the current budget. Right, right. Yeah, uh, through, through the mayor that um, hasn't been um, completely identified, but we'll be working with Port Adelaide over the next couple of years. They haven't slated any streetscape works for next year, uh, more than likely the following year. Uh, so we'll bring that back to council for, for consideration over the next year to the budget deliberation process. So, so just to clarify, unless we suddenly magically give you some money, the study files will be pulled out and that is attached. And a new poles are going on new blocks of concrete that are to match the existing footpath. Yep, they'll reinstate like for like yeah. as soon as the stone is plucked out of the ground. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Back, are you happy to move it with that answer? Happy to move it. Okay. Do you have a second it? Councillor Harris, would you speak to it? I wish to uh, second it with disappointment that I will see that or most of it go to move grey before we see much improvement uh, from the polls. Mm, not well, are eh? I'm oh, not feeling well, so... <laughs> <laughs> right. Unless it's, unless it's shorter than four years or something. Thank you. Does anybody wish to debate how great an idea it is? That's about it. Show us a light. Uh, yes, or a ray of light. Um, but at any rate, uh, yeah, I'm just wondering with us doing all this like, undergrounding and, you know, particularly on um, some parts of our main roads, that um, uh, with the style of the uh, new lamp hole, um, are we still getting the ones that we cannot um, be allowed to put any, um, like, um, promotional signage hanging from them. This to me is an opportunity lost. That was a question, but I'm pretty sure yes. we're not the owner of the pole that goes back. Director, is that? Uh, yeah, through, through the mayor, that's uh, the Department of Transport that own that, that infrastructure. And there are some um, conditions around that, rightly so. But there's no reason why we can't raise it to see what we can do, if, if anything. Yes, uh, uh, just uh, apropos of that, you know, we, uh, I've raised it from time to time and no doubt other political members uh, have as well, but it just seems we keep getting told uh, that we can't have these <laughs> um, and surely, you know, if it's a design thing, um, surely they can just design them a little better 
so there'll be can get a bit more added value. I don't care whose property it is. I mean, you know, it just seems to me an opportunity being lost. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've got a, uh, I guess it's more of a question of process uh, on this one, and maybe a, a paper to come up yet, which is we're being asked to recommend the budget bid to be considered as part of the budget process, but we're also being asked to approve the project. Now, I'm very supportive of the project. I think it's a great idea, um, and I'll support the motion tonight. And I am just a bit. Um, concern that, that we're committing to a project but we're not committing to the funds until such time we put the budget. And if the budget position was that, that we had to cut projects, this might be one that we decide to cut. And that would be really unfortunate. So um, just to, I guess, whether I could get a comment from the CEO about how this works from a process point of view. Yeah, I think this one's in two parts. Of CEO, colleges. No, thank you, Mayor. Uh, it is in two parts. Because the first part is, to provide some indication to the City of Port Adelaide Airport that you're interested in participating in the project. So hence it's an in principle support, that you support the intent of the project. Um, you haven't actually endorsed the project because we don't have any funds to do it. And the second part of the recommendation is to provide an opportunity for you to consider allocating those funds as part of the budget. But clearly the funds what wouldn't be available if you decide not to include it in the budget. Thank you. So, second question is uh, really one of them timing. Uh, when do we need to commit to the project? Director, is there any time frame you can give to us? Um, through the Mayor, um, they would like us to commit as of next year, next financial year. This, this project has been on cards for a very long time. Um, and they have approached us, but they, they want to uh, collaborate with us uh, before they may make a step. Um, but yeah, look, um, the elected members that support Adelaide Airports elected members are keen to get on with this project. It is, it is the, final, the final section. Uh, but yeah, the answer to your question is uh, they want some commitment uh, each year, if, if possible. Yeah. Okay, thank you, which makes sense in terms of budget time. Yes, yeah. I'm comfortable with that. Um, look, I, as I said, I think it's a really good project. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure why our local Neighbouring council has been so generous, but I think it's great they are. They'd be great man to grow. I think we should have maybe a commemorative poll for Councillor Harris um, and to make sure it's done within the next little while so he can see the fruits of his labour. Um, but I think, um, look, it is a great project. Yeah, thank you. Um, just briefly from the chair, my recollection is, and I'm happy to sit correct, the curb and gutter along Hampstead Road is in pretty good shape. So we don't have the drivers like we did on other roads without ripping all that stuff again. I think the footpath's been repaid at some point, not that that's the only thing we get driven by, but so there's not the imperative to radically transform. Notwithstanding that, we might do it anyway, because further up on Hampstead Road, where put out infill control both sides, they put in some quite elaborate paving here the eight years ago. Very, like very expensive. At, um, quite expensive. And really good to go and look at and reflect on it. <coughs> investment or not, um, and maybe we should do that. Uh, um, but I, I look forward to hearing from the team what we should and shouldn't do when the timing would be, because obviously we're pretty much chopped up for a while. But um, I take Councillor Harris's Senate. Harris's Senate is wildly excited to have some undergrounding on the eastern side of our city, uh, and somewhat disappointed that um, the following investment might take a little bit longer. Is that your sum up correctly? That's I'm satisfied. <laughs> well, it's yes, got an extension yes, for it that. Um, thank you. Any, any further debate on the site? <coughs> right. uh, Councillor Debat, you should sum up. Um, look, again, I'm just collectively, except for a couple, I guess, excited about it. I think it's a really good opportunity. Um, look, it is a shame that we can't sort of tie in the streetscape in right this minute, um, but I think it could be opportunities for collaborative projects with arts community or whatever, and I'm sure it'll um, certainly appeal to people who want to invest in the area. Um, uh, updated streetscape with no wires in the air. So, yeah, support the motion. Thank you. The debate was in favour. It's carried unanimously. Thank you. Next one is the Local Nuisance and Litter Control Act 2016 Operational, pages 249 to 250. Councillor Evans, just a brief reason why you should 
I'll just to speak to the motion. I'm happy to move it. Any move? Right away. So, um, yeah, really just a quick couple of comments on this, and I guess it's more so with the Eastern Health Authority hat on. Um, so, uh, to draw, I guess, elected members' attention to these new um, provisions that I guess we're asking EHAR to look to explore, so noise, odour, dust, smoke, um, and any other aspects we deem may draw security in EHAR's remit. Um, at the moment, EHAR's not equipped to do this, so they do food inspections and um, they do immunisations and they do all inspections in environmental health and squalor to a degree, so they look after squalor, which I guess has some there on some of this stuff, but a lot of it is specialised and, and I think just to reinforce that um, it's, it's not as simple as just finding it off the hub. We're going to hear more about this over the coming months and, and the next probably year. Um, they will need to retool, they'll need to upskill, um, they'll need to develop a whole um, plethora of new resources and I've highlighted one comment there at item 4 which has changed the EHA charter and if we remember what fun that was in 2016 I'm sure that won't be an easy task either so just to I guess more elected members attention to how big this is, it is a really big <coughs> Uh, and it's, um, it's a policy uh, front that if you choose to support the motion that I do, uh, I think it's a, a good thing for EHA to look after, but there will be costs and there will be reconfigurations and readjustments required at that organisation, um, which no doubt will have gone next to us. Thank you. Have a second that. Mr. Bain, speak to it. Uh, yes, as a uh, EHA board member, I think this is um, uh, just going to be most probably, um, possibly, uh, uh, a forerunner of things now that we, you know, have um, uh, under the public health changes to the Public um, Health Act and the conveyance uh, of, of those. Um, possibly we might um, also um, in the City of Prospect with more um, uh, apartment buildings and things like that possibly, I don't know, see um, some um, possibly more uh, some some of this um, uh, noise, um, possibly, but at any rate. So um, I just think that it's um, uh, something else that uh, we are, you know, instead of all, obviously our councils separately doing it, it's something that can be done perhaps uh, you know more effectively at uh, under EHA. Um, and get the expertise that's uh, in required instead of duplicating it around all the councils. So um, I commend uh, the recommendation to our council to support um, because it's pending other EHA council support. But, um, uh, yeah, so I just commend it to you. Okay, thank you. Any further debate? Councillor Bates. Just a little bit of clarification. Um, on page 257, 524 just mentioning that the Adelaide Hills Council had been managing noise complaints um, in an agreement with the EPA. Is, is this in effect cost shifting? Is this something that the state was usually doing or it was always being done by the local government? Mm. It's over the years. And now, are you say collectively? Yes. The longer answer is, <clears throat> well, and I, I, I speak from the chair of some authority because I was involved as president of the LGA negotiation group minister. Um, the negotiations went somewhat along the lines of uh, minister, we think this is cost shifting. Minister's response, well, so you're going to get it anyway. So let's talk about the detail, but you're going to get it. Um, now, cost shifting in the sense that was somebody else paying the bill which will now come to us. Well, that, that really hinges on whether you think someone else is doing the job. And the most common complaint about noise was no one did the job. So the EPA are not starting to do it, they don't attend, they don't care about loud parties, so often you call the police about disturbing peace. So the state government don't consider it cost shifting because they are really doing it. Um, and they've also put, as part of the negotiations, an expiation notice framework around so if you expiate somebody, you can get an income source and they said you'll have the authority to not just do the job but to keep all the expiations. Off you go. So we delayed it as long as we could, but we couldn't avoid it. Now, I'm happy to take an alternate answer. It might be less emotive if there is one. I think I've covered it. Yep. Uh, I, if I may, uh, man, that is absolutely correct. This has been bouncing around for quite a long time, now years, 
and local government has resisted. It is going to be quite a resource intensive issue. Um, and I think the state has recognised that they just do not uh, provide any level of service. And so let's give it to local government. We are the closest to the people and so we'll be able to respond. The community is very tired of being bounced around. So they will, if somebody will telephone um, the EPA to complain about smoke, they'll refer to the council, they'll contact us. We will say, no, it's not our issue, it's the EPA issue, and ultimately it's a very dissatisfied customer, and we essentially wear quite a lot of angst in respect to that. Um, and some councils have taken it on in a pilot sense to try and determine what level of resources is actually required. Now, for Adelaide Hills Council, a lot of the issue is in smoke, not only from heaters, but also from farming and the, the practices that occur there. And um, they, I think, uh, recognise that it is resource, a resource issue, but wanted to actually try and provide a better service to their community. So I think inevitably uh, it is an issue that's been transferred from state government to local government. I don't think the expiation fee is actually going to cover the cost of it at all. Uh, and so in, inherent in your question about cost shifting, there is a shift in the cost of it because we will not be able to recoup the cost of the service. Okay. Any further counts to the back? After that, joyous response. Yeah. Any other debate? No. Right. Councillor Evans, just to sum up. No. Okay. All those in favour? Yes. Carry it out. The next item withdrawn was the North Adelaide Parkland funding proposal, page 267. Councillor Harris, just a brief reason why you withdrew it. Um, one, because I hadn't read it enough, and I always try to be honest if necessary, uh, which brings me to my normal thought when it comes to parklands. I hate us, not us, but anyone sort of dibbling at it. People sometimes have. No, I was going into a spill there. Uh, I've raised it because, generally speaking, I'm opposed to uh, changing of the parklands. Okay, so you don't wish to move it? No, thank you. Okay, we have a move it in the current form. Page 267. Is that controversial? Councillor Deputy Mayor Mark Crew? Nothing. <laughs> 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 Uh, look, I'm happy to accept it as red items that have got a motion that will be voted for. I've yeah. seconded it. Councillor Evans, do you speak to it? Sure. Uh, great speech by Deputy Mayor there. Um, uh, look, more or less just to echo that sentiment as well. Um, you know, this is a, a conversation happening at Adelaide City Council and there's some ways we can better make use of the Northern Parklands. We are a community that's landlocked with 3% open space and anything we can do to provide more open space to our residents and for that open space to be meaningful has to be a good thing. So this motion is not talking about money at this stage, it's talking about continuing conversation, um, which makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yeah, Harris. Okay, thank you. Um, my, my couple of ones that go, and I'll just ask one quick question before. Is this solely along the lines of assisting black forests to look after their overpart? Okay. My, my thing, as I said before, in, in basically being opposed to changing the park lands that it is, it's good to have sports things on it, it's good to have bike paths, it's good to do nice, general, I don't know, jogging shoes and all that, running around the place. But it was put there um, for the whole city as a break, not not just sports and not just entertainments and groups and that, but to give that break between a city, city and a suburb. And while some of us might think they don't look good, maybe those horses wandering around and, and things like that, but just sometimes having trees and nature as it is, or as it was, is also good. So I, that's why I'm concerned in that bit. The point two comes through the development plan that we just done earlier on, or proposal, or that sort of stuff. If we as a, a, a city are being told and we go along with it, I agree with it to a part, um, of building bigger buildings along our corridors and denser people and things like that. We shouldn't be looking at using the parklands, and I'm sorry to a previous councillor spoke, it's just my view on it, 
to be looking at that to be an a answer for some of it. If, if governments of any persuasion are telling us we have to put more people on blocks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we go along with that, they should be supplying. We should, we should be perhaps having playgrounds down on the train line because the train doesn't run all the time, or other parts, or buying houses in our area and developing us and giving us parks in our own area as opposed to using the other. But it doesn't mean that the end result I won't support going along with the lot, but just at this moment I, I get touchy when we start digging in. We've just done South Road or doing South Road upgrade and this council here was approached by don't know who, but I think it was Ditcher or these sort of people that came and we've widened park terrace and various things. And those of us that have been around, and I'm not even talking about old people, those have been around where Calypso was and that, to already see how much now where that medium strip is, all that used to be parkland. And just seeing little things go away and disappear, and I still think parkland should be the parkland. So I won't support it, but it doesn't mean later a thing to go off. Chosen. Thank you. Any further debate on this item? Just a key step. Mm. the group, so you need to sum up. <coughs> oh, look, I, maybe I was a little brief in my only comments, and thank you to Cass Evans, who probably um, summarised the paper really well. I, I do want to make the point, though, and, and I think um, Councillor Harris touched on this, um, but I'm, I've said through slightly different means, which is that we do have a high density of people living um, in the prospect of very close to parklands, and, and it is an obvious um, location for lots of people to go. I know personally I use the parklands uh, with my children on a quite regular basis, so um, I think it is part of the conversation about how we use it better and how we make sure we have sympathetic use. And the way we can try and control that is to be part of that conversation rather than being it, leaving it to others and then other people make that decision in, in its entirety without our input. So I think our input in these sort of conversations is really quite important. Um, I will support it, obviously, I have moved it, um, and I do commend it to everyone in the chamber. Okay, thank you. That concludes the debate. All those in favour? All those against? And Ms. Carrot. Thank you. Not the next. All right, next item withdrawn was Alexander Street Reconstruction Project. Sydney Mayor Group, which is a brief reason why it's drawn. Uh, I just had some questions, so I'm happy to move it at the same time. Okay, yep, far away from you. Um, so I had a couple of questions. One will uh, be similar to what I asked earlier, but I might just start on 5.16, which is the loan borrowing table in the report. Okay, just page down by the Is that the 239? And I just want to be, I guess this is really just to clarify my reading of the paper. Um, so it talks about if we increase our borrowing of $800,000 for this project, we're still on target for an operating surplus ratio and also net financial liabilities ratio and the asset sustainability ratio is a tad under our target range. So that's kind of current. So, so that borrowing doesn't change it. But I'm interested in the next table which talks about uh, retention tram bar, um, what that does to our targets if we increase our borrowings by that $800,000. So I'm just wondering if... Um, the appropriate person could just make comment on that. Director? <laughs> Through the Chair, uh, Council's long-term plan um, will have all the KPI within our, I guess, within our targets if we were to borrow for 6A, which is the 12 million project. Um, I think a month ago when we explored the tram barn, um, the retention of the tram barn, what does that mean? So if we were to retain the tram barn, which is paragraph 5.19, what that means is we will still maintain the target, as you can see with all the green ticks, but if we were to add another 800 on top of it, we will be working outside of it. Yes. Without, with the current assumption, without increasing in rates, without any additional um, income stream. So we will be working outside our three KPIs, our three, KPIs three key KPIs. Thank you. So, so again, in the paper it talks about uh, increasing rate of revenue on 0.1%. Uh, that's correct. So that will cover the interest payments on the $800,000 we've got here. Yeah. Through the chair. Uh, paragraph 520, it talks about if we were to increase our 
rates, uh, average residential rates from 2.5, what we projected, plus growth to 2.6 plus growth, that will mean that we can service the interest. So we will still need to repay the amount, but what that means is by increasing that rates, we will be able to have our operating ratios within the, the KPI range. Thank you. Um, and my third question uh, relates similarly to the question I asked earlier. Um, this recommendation is in one part and it talks about budget being be considered as part of the budget immigration process for this year. Um, however, we've already been notified that we've been successful with the grants. So, um, what was to happen if the council decided not to support this budget? Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you. See you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we would write back to um, the Minister and indicate that we were not in a position to fund it. Um, now, whilst you might think that uh, is not an appropriate thing to do, the timing of the grant application was such that we took the opportunity to lodge the paperwork, knowing that we didn't have the funds until the Council has actually endorsed the budget. The Government does deal with that sort of issue uh, uh, over a number of years and from a number of councils and uh, I'm sure they would completely understand if for some reason council determined that it wasn't able to actually fund the project and bring forward that uh, that particular uh, work for Alexander Street. Okay, thank you. Um, look, I'm, as I said, at the outset supportive of the motion and of the project. Um, I just think it will have some, um, I guess, we need to realise some of the challenges as we go through the budget process and look at this, and particularly as we start or continue the conversation around the tram bar. And this is a really good example about how when we do things, it does impact on rate revenue. So that you think the other consideration we'll need to make. Um, so this is a decision as much about rate revenue as it is or rate, rate um, the, the amount of rates we set each year as much as it is about the project itself. That being said, um, we spend four dollars, we get given a dollar for the project. That's pretty good odds. Um, I don't think we should uh, not take advantage of that in terms of the, um, the the grant offering for the state government as well. So I'm supportive of it. But I'll be interested to hear what other members have to say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. That's um, Yes, um, I think it's. Uh, uh, we don't get too many opportunities such as this to spend on um, infrastructure. So. Um, you know, and I think um, the I, I am just interested if this. Um, I, I haven't looked lately at the audit committee's um, agenda, and that I'm just wondering <coughs> uh, has this been through the audit committee yet? I'd be interested in their opinion. On this. But it generally hasn't. <laughs> oh, well, um, I guess I just have to remain interested then <laughs> in what it could have been. Um, yeah, so I think that, you know, I mean, um, I think we do very well out of our financing for the loans, the local government finance authority. Um, and quite often, you know, I think we should um, capitalise most probably on that um, the factor uh, alone. And I think um, with rating, you know, I think um, residents are far more understanding that they can actually see you're doing something with their rates rather than a lot of all the invisible stuff that happens that may be hard to explain to them. Um, so I'm in favour of it, uh, depending the budget. Uh, <coughs> yes. Um, any further debate? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Harrison, work your way around. <laughs> um, just briefly, while we weren't here, well, why I wasn't here last week, it was one of the questions I did send to Chris about this one was, I believe it's brought it forward four years um, from when it was going to be done. And so my question centred around, which gives me whether I vote yeah or no, is um, how far, just because it's come forward four years because of the size of the project, you'll remember of the government part of it, um, how far does it put back the roads in that four years or three years, I suppose? Yeah, directly. Uh, does it have any impact on the timing of everything else? So, so does it mean every single road that was in the next three years all go back one year? I don't think they change, but there is... 
That's the fact. Yeah. Sorry, Director, can you clarify why it doesn't change? What's the matter? Yeah. I think it's the borrowing, isn't it? That's correct. Yes. So the borrowing. That is correct. So this is the isolated project that has been brought forward and is funded through the loan fund. So when we get to four years later, the program of that particular day may change by bringing something forward if council were to, to fund that level of capital expenditure in that year. But in terms of all these other years, it's unlikely to change. So the, so the other projects just go as planned, well, mm. if mm. they all get passed. Mm. But my, my understanding of the council that in four years' time we'd actually have a gap of a million bucks in the program, and we could at that time choose to pull things forward from the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth year out. There. But we, we, the program, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, is, is designed to be funded through our normal capital works program. So this is about putting something on top of our normal program. Right. Mm. Okay. Any further questions or debate? No, I believe I, I believe I've been waiting for. Who do I believe? Councillor Tobacco, I think you're next. Yeah. Um, so I'll do the sandwich. Positive, negative, positive. Um, I, I think it's great to be investing in infrastructure. I think we really need to focus on it because if we don't spend money on it, then it costs us more in the long run. So I think that's really a great opportunity, and I think commend the staff for putting the paperwork in it early, that's great. Um, what I don't really um, appreciate is the fact that certainly the workshop last week and also just the 5.19 um, mention um, that basically you, you're line balling the tram barn off against this project and really we make cho choices as a, as a council um, to fund street parties or parks or, you know, NBN or whatever it is that we're funding, um, I think the fact that we're saying, well, either or, and if you go this way, then it's going to cost the counts, the um, residents more. So I think it's actually quite unfair that the tram bun's being set up as a bit of a scapegoat um, to an either or. I know it's one of these um, sort of situations where we've probably gone out in a, on a different tact. We certainly reacted to what residents have said and their fondness for the tram bun and looking at other ways to um, either lease it, retain it. There were possibilities that still may be sold. Um, however, I think it was quite unfair that that was presented in, in such a manner. Okay. Uh, Councillor Evans, you're next. Brief question and then uh, a comment. Um, the question side, the fixed or variable rate, is really what the question is in terms of what the borrowing cost is going to be, but roughly what's the figure that the LGA will quote, say, for a and I'll fix right. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, well, precise art. Yeah, so three we haven't spoken to the LGFA yet. This uh, funding agreement does come with a discounted interest rate, and that's the reason why I, I don't have the exact answer for you yet. The discount's in the order of about quarter of a percent. Um, and going on uh, discussions through the uh, long-term financial plan discussion, we were talking about four and a half. So somewhere in that low falls is what I expect to see. Uh, we haven't had that discussion yet. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so, so I am supportive of it. Um, but very aware though of the CLIP project. And so when we talk about you know debt borrowings, I guess we've got the CLIP project, but that isn't a known art yet. And the potential for I guess there to be you know exposure through that project from a borrowing's perspective is is there. So in supporting this motion, I guess what I'm looking at is I'm looking at what's the cost of time value of money, because that's ultimately what we're talking about. So we're getting 200 grand from the government to bring forward a capital project. Well, that makes a lot of sense. But if we didn't do that, if we deferred that project back to where it's currently positioned in our long-term financial plan, over the long term, would we be better or worse off? So in other words, would 200 grand of interest on the, um, no, sorry, would the 200 grand that we're saving from this project be worth the additional interest that we're paying? Let's say it's 4. Point, what was that number? 4.25 percent. Um, back of a cigarette packet number, say it's about 160 to 170 thousand dollars in interest. Um, so we are ahead through adopting this approach. So regardless, the project's got to be done. Um, it's not a case of do we want to re-engineer the road or not. We need to do it. We need to repair Alexandra Street. Um, there's an argument does it happen now or does it happen later. Well, if it happens later and we don't take the 200 grand, we're financially worse off than we can take the 200 grand and bring it forward. So it kind of makes financial sense to bring it forward. Possible, but not much. <laughs> not really much bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Well, well, again, you know, we don't know the interest rates. I used to smoke, so cigarettes. Yeah, so, 160, 170 grand was you know, very rough numbers. So, yes, we're yeah, not by a huge amount, but by you know, 40 grand. One. 
better than being Thank you for that perspective. Very very Councillor Lee. I thank God for Councillor Evans because I thought he was going to get up and say finance, finance, we can't afford it. Um, I think it's a an, it's an important project for for about four years because um, the residents of um, Alexandra Street or Lake Alexandra, as they call it, have been waiting uh, decades for this to happen. So it's a, it's an exciting project. Um, you know, sometimes we have to take risks, <coughs> and this is a good risk to take, and it's going to. Um, especially around the flooding issue where these residents are tapping into their um, insurance policies every year um, when we have big rains, which is becoming more and more frequent. So I hope that it sounds like it's got support and um, I hope that is the case and um, hurrah for the residents of Alexandra Street and thanks uh, for our staff for working hard to make sure that this happens. Thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor Group, we start. <coughs> Um, just to say, um, I think Councillor Debat had made mention of uh, spending money on infrastructure is really important, and I think she's right. That's certainly one of the things that we have as our core business in Council. Um, we've heard from Councillor Evans, it makes financial sense, and I think um, that sounds um, pretty good to me. <laughs> and so, irrespective of the um, the, the uh, back of the envelope numbers, but I think it certainly makes sense. Well, I'm just glad. <laughs> no um, so I'm very supportive of it. I think it's got support in the chamber, which would be good, and I commend it to you. Thank you. That concludes the debate. All those in favour? Yes. Carried unanimously. <coughs> okay. The uh, next item on the agenda is item 20 to the council diary, and we have a number of things here: the launch of the revamped airway shelter garden adjacent, um, uh, helped along with our grant from the uh, from the Commonwealth understand. So, Correct. No, We've given the grant, but also a grant from the RSL or National RSL. Anyway, checks with cash. So, uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> our next item is the uh, Prospect RSL sub branch. Who are in no trouble at all. Prospect RSL are uh, doing very well. Ends at the dawn service on the 25th of April. So, we're really happy to see you and I for both those events. Um, the eight nights of autumn, summer, sorry, on Friday the 28th of April, I'll be there. Uh, North Adelaide versus West Adelaide on the 29th of April. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I can be there at that one. Uh, prospect of hope, hope you can, hopefully the hosting went well for Castle Lowell, the last game. That's us and what else, mate. That's true. No, we will. We will. <laughs> <laughs> and the Prospect Gallery Exhibition Form and Reform opens on the 7th of May. And apologies as a game list there, which should be in uh, the agenda. So that's 20th of that date, doesn't make sense. So, over the page to, so, sorry, the next item. Sorry, oh, Councillor Barnett. Speak about that. Um, yes, uh, I might like just to add um, implication coming from Prospect Local Environment Group, but there's the next um, Prospect Eco Market being held on the uh, Saturday, the 29th of April from 8am uh, to 1pm in the Town Hall and Iron Street Plaza and got over 50 stalls, uh, uh, I understand, mm -hmm. and music, mm -hmm. whatever. And, and probably just a note to somebody somewhere, it goes back to the earlier question from Councillor Evans, if we're funding something as an event, should that feature in our agenda here? Mm -hmm. Last question to ask, so maybe we'll leave it with you, CEO. Yeah, sure. And you capture all that. Yeah. Um, thank you, Councillor May. Uh, general business. Do we have any items for of a minor nature of action by the administration or any reports? Councillor Larwood has put them in. Councillor Larwood, you wish to move? Yes, I, I don't know whether we have formally thanks John John for making the trip to um, Prospect Base. I know we've been formally thanked him, but I thought that uh, we should send something to him on behalf of the speed but it was a great, great trip and uh, opened up a lot of ideas and conversations. Yeah, they got a little article in the paper today too. Um, <coughs> you moved it, got a second up? 
Yeah. So they're able to speak to speak to it. Sure. Um, other than to say it was uh, it was a real privilege to catch up for breakfast with Councillor Larwood and, and John when he was in in town. Um, a fantastic uh, character to have a chat to. Some great ideas as well. Um, you know, City Prospects in a really great space. I think through looking to engage with ICF and particularly having John here was a real privilege. So um, absolutely commend the motion and thank um, Councillor Larwood as well for his work and efforts in um, in hosting um, John while he was in town. Yeah. So yeah. So, so, any further debate? No? I'll take that to Councillor Lower just to sum up the uh, other excellent speech. No? But all those in favour? Yes, carried unanimously. Thanks for that motion. Good idea. Happy to write to you. Any further general business of the mine actual according to reports? No? Any general business of the urgent nature? No? Good. Confidential items. Uh, we have Item 23.1, Community Service Award nominations, and slightly different in your papers, so I'm going to ask someone to move part one, which is that we... Oh, your gallery? We have to go into oh, confidentiality. <coughs> part one? <laughs> but just focus. I'm just I'm trying to get this right up here, but I'm sure. uh, That we move the order to exclude the public, which is just part one of the of the recommendation you have before you, someone willing to move part one. Councillor Lowell, you should speak to it. Still a seconder. Councillor Barnett, you should speak to it. Any further debate? All those in favour against is carried unanimously. So I can ask those people who are not named in order to exclude to please leave the um, meeting. Thank you, members of the gallery. Thank you, Jeff, for coming along. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, and and the manager, Peggy. <laughs> um, on a 23.2 strategic property acquisition, um, there is a recommendation here. Again, I'll take it in parts. Part one uh, to move that we exclude the public. So we can move that way. Councillor Harris, we should speak to it. Got a seconder. Deputy Mayor Mark Group, we should speak to it. Any no. further debate? All those in favour, against, carried unanimously. That is the meeting. Uh, at the end of the confidential items, I'm going to close the meeting.